Okay, okay. All right, all right. Give me this. And we are live, I believe. All right, someone go tell Bill to take down that Twitter thingy. All right, guys, if you can see this, uh, we're really sorry that we are late. Uh, we had some serious technical difficulties uh, with getting this live stream up today. Apparently, there's some uh, scheduled maintenance across all of the YouTube, and I would only assume that that is why we are late. So really sorry about that, guys. Thanks for sticking with us, and the live show is beginning right now. Okay, so before we get into our topic, which uh, you guys probably don't know about, is Christmas is coming. Um, we're going to go over some of the promos we got going. Uh, first of which is our, our coupon code, Xmas25, for 25% off select items. We also have our million dollar giveaway going on. You can either use the coupon code or the million dollar giveaway. In the million dollar giveaway, you're going to get um, you're going to get free stuff valued up to 25%. Uh, of the stuff you purchased on select items. And what's cool about that, and I like the million dollar giveaway because you put stuff in your cart uh, and then you can you know, choose your free gifts and you're gonna get points for a lot of stuff you take uh, into your cart. And essentially, we have almost the entire gambit of stuff on our website uh, in that free gift section. So you know, a lot of people can choose guns, a lot of people choose BBs gear, uh, tactical gear, I already said gear, um, essentials, uh, internal parts. There's a lot of stuff you can use with the million dollar giveaway. And I think it's really cool and, and and again, in my personal opinion, it's more fun. Uh, also, uh, our Santa giveaway is still going on. So uh, whether you use a coupon code or a million dollar giveaway, it doesn't matter. Um, whenever you make an order, you're going to get a passcode for the Santa's giveaway. You can put into a secondary site and have a chance of winning a lot of awesome stuff. Um, again, it's a chance, but a lot of the stuff on there is pretty darn expensive and amazing. First of which I like to mention is the Crytac Limited Edition Light Machine Gun. Uh, you have a chance of winning that. Also, Pantac and Sistema products are 50% off. So if you ever want anything from Pantac or Sistema, get it now while the stuff is still in stock. I actually know, well, Mark was just here, but he just bought, I don't know, like four or five Pantac bags, mm -hmm. like the gear bags, because now that's 50% off. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a ridiculous awesome. discount. <laughs> uh, select G&G guns are, are over 20% off for one more day. So uh, if you're looking for, let's say, like a G&G &G combat machine or a variety of other G&G &G guns, um, those are going to be over 20% off, the select G&G &G guns. Um, also, Condor ACU, or so otherwise known as UCP, is also 50% off. So if you're looking for any Condor gear that's ACU slash UCP, um, you're going to be able to get that for 50% off. And our Spending Spree patch package is going live at noon Pacific Standard Time this Saturday. And the Spending Spree uh, patch package is pretty awesome. It's actually, uh, we decided to do... Uh, to do this patch package after our last patch package uh, ran out. We sold 2,000 of those patch packages, and everyone who bought that had a chance to win a $1,000 shopping spree. And we had so many people that wanted another crack at it that we're doing it again. So um, so this uh, this Saturday, that is going live at noon Pacific Standard Time. Oh, by the way, you're taking up the entire screen. I don't care. In fact, Greg, get up. Get up, get up. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, our Plano, Texas store, um, just so you guys know, I, in, in case you don't, we our Texas store uh, is going to be on the map very soon. In fact, our grand opening is going to be on January 10th, 2015. Um, it's, at, uh, it's located at 4720-4720, State Highway 121, number 160, Plano, Texas, 75024. There's a lot of folks that have been playing some detective games on where exactly it is, and now you have the address. It's 4720 State Highway 121, number 160, Plano, Texas, 75024. Yeah. Indeed. Quite. Um, special guest for today is Greg Wong, a.k.a. Spartan117GW. Uh, him and his PTS shirt, as well as a lot of other really cool PTS products. Yes. Indeed. So, now our live show is going to be a little shorter today since uh, the live show kind of started late. But without further ado, Greg, why don't you... Show us some PTS goodness. All right. <laughs> so we actually have a couple awesome things here. Let me go ahead and put them in position. Uh, more or less, we have some new rails coming out. So as you guys know, the Centurion Arms rails uh, released a couple months ago, and we actually just acquired the Fortis license. So what we have here is the Fortis key mod. It's the Fortis uh, rev rail, and it's more or less uh, it has key mod on the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock. So it's very, very slim, very, very lightweight. As you can see, uh, Fortis kind of has this thing for... Skeletonization, mm -hmm. so they like to really cut down on the weight, and as you can see, it's very slick, and it's it's a pretty pretty uh, pretty nice actually. I actually have a uh, full of. Are those the full. same folks that make that skeletonized grip? Yes. Ah, yes. that looks awesome. Oh, like, that one. Yeah. 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 It's the same guys. Yeah. That's cool. So, this is actually what it looks like when it's on a built-up rifle, and what's actually kind of cool is that 
They match the FDE to uh, match uh, Magpul's FDE as well. Oh, so that's a good idea. These will actually be coming out soon. So this is the 12-inch version. Uh, as you saw, this is the 12-inch version in black. Um, but yeah, I'm really hoping to see a lot more Forest stuff because they actually have quite a unique look. It's very solid. And, and uh, like you said, it's incredibly lightweight. And when I picked up the gun, I was surprised yeah. how lightweight it was. So for those of you looking for a lightweight setup, you're definitely going to want to check out these rails. Um, yeah, it's just really comfortable. Yeah. This one, yeah. I like how it's basically a hybrid between key mod and traditional. Uh, standard Picatinny? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is awesome. See, so you got the battle comp on there, too. Yes, nice. yes, indeed. Very, very well this played. one's actually got the Rainier on there. If, you, if you're looking at this one, this one's a little bit different. It's a little shorter. Uh, this one is the carbine cutout. There we go. It's kind of designed, more or less, so you can use your standard A-frame front sight post. Uh, but what's also cool is that it uses the existing barrel nut that comes with your gun, so you don't have to get another barrel nut, whatever you have on there. You just take off all the necessary parts, and you can pretty much slap this rail on there. Pretty simple. Oh, okay. nice oh I see that. That's yeah, yeah, because nice. you can see the... Uh, the uh -huh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Is, actually, so it's a very similar in to how like, the Centurion C4 rails do the same thing. But I always thought that was cool because you don't have to have an aftermarket. Yeah, right. I didn't actually notice that, how it's like the same, like yep, where you come with the one. Delta ring. Yeah. Really quick, I'd like <laughs> to give a shout out to Rubber Phoenix. Your shout Rubber out Phoenix. is approved. All right. And let's see. Uh, uh, next thing we have is the CMR 11 and the 9 inch. Now, the CMR is probably our most popular rail right now. You're rocking a couple of these on your guns. I yes, yeah. I have the 12 and a half inch on mine, um, but uh, we just recently got these in. These are the production samples for the 9 and the 11. Definitely really cool. You know, one of the things people were basically uh, asking for the most was, we love this rail. Do you guys have a shorter one? And without further ado, yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, it was actually kind of funny. At uh, I think it was... Um, one of the videos before Sultan Antioch, I actually had the real 9-inch one on mine, and it's actually really amazing how close they are. But this is what it looks like dressed up on the gun, so if you want to see what it looks like in a CQB configuration, yeah. and that is what it looks like. got to pull it yes. back this way, Bill, so you can see the rail. The other way. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and you've got the uh, the there golf go. ball rail cutter. Was it was it called? It's Dimple? the uh, Centurion Arms uh, rail panels. It's yeah. A you know, very simple nomenclature, but mm -hmm. the, the texture is very unique, and just the way they're cut... Um, I think that's one of the biggest draws for the actual rail system itself with the rail uh, panel configuration. Is it, it's very unique. You know, there's not a lot of um, rail systems with, in conjunction with the panels that look just like it. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very comfortable. And I always, always loved how the uh, hand oh, stop is just, you. you can more or less bolt that right into the rail system. Yeah, that is pretty handy. It also it does feel very comfortable, and it still gives you that that uh, ability to grip the gun pretty well. So I like um, the I like the cutouts because I feel like it could have a lot of fun with paracord. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, I know. I yeah, saw. I saw on your LM4, you're a big fan of weaving paracord through there, and you know, there's definitely a lot. To do. I don't know if it's a big fan. I just got kind of bored one day, and I was like, well, oh, "That's one it. way to do it." Yeah, it worked. It's a nice way of customizing uh, your uh, rail systems and your guns. Kind of gives it its own taste, its own feel. Adds a little color. Let's see what attachments do you guys run for CQB? Oh, that's well. a good question for you, Greg. Let's there see. Well, for CQB, um, more or less, obviously, uh, I like running the T1 style aim points. It's very simple, very low profile. Um, it doesn't have a lot of tubing. Um, you know, some of the bigger red dots out there, you'll get what's called tubing, where it's just it's so long, you're kind of it's almost like looking down a tunnel. So the yeah. shorter the tube, the better. Or either that, or have a a, a wider, larger tube, um, kind of like the Trigicon SRS. But basically, anything out there that's really going to give you a wide field of view. Personally, um, it's not currently on this one, but I like these because you can put a kill flash on it, which it's going to save you uh, getting hit straight in the lens. Actually, yeah, at okay. Faded Giant, one of the Op4 guys shot a pink BB straight in my, my kill really? flash, and it caved in because I brought the gun up, and I was like, what is that? And I looked at it, and I was like, well, there goes that kill flash, but at least it yeah. saved the optics. That's yeah, definitely nice. Buy a whole new that. one. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, when it comes to CQB, I mean, grip configuration, it, it more or less shooter configurable. I will say having a flashlight is very handy in CQB, especially in low light, like a game pod. But even in general, because you can you can white rope the guys with the the BBs, you can watch the the rope of BBs and more or less track your targets that way. But that's some simple things. Yeah, that is a handy uh, handy thing for me as well, because yeah. I generally don't use optics because I always wear a full face mask. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna change that in the near future. But yeah, being able to turn on the flashlight and see exactly where your BBs are going, if you know if you can't remember if you didn't set up your well, gear. The first gameplay videos you guys did, you used that technique. That's right. It's very, really handy. Yeah. Um, also, you know, it does help disorient the enemy player, uh, especially if you're using a, uh, an offensive flashlight, uh, i.e. one that has strobe. 
Oh, the seizure induced yeah. events. <laughs> they don't actually induce seizures. Um, actually, if if you do suffer from seizures, you could yeah, have it's a seizure. Possible. Really, it is possible. Yeah. That's a, well, I, I was thinking of the Japanese ha cartoons. <clears throat> Haven't you ever seen like on the the warning label on the video game? It says that. What video game? Any video game, actually, it on has the back. A lot of flashes it, and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it can actually cause seizures. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now you, you learn something. Wow. Bob Dunn there learned something. <laughs> you should teach. <do>. Okay. <laughs> you would. All right. Um, let's see here. Jacob Ramos. We just mentioned you in this video, as requested. <laughs> All right. Um, now, in case any of you don't know, uh, the theme for our live show today is Christmas is coming, which is part of the Christmas. reason why we... Went over a lot of the promos, and we're also uh, we're also going to be heading to um, all of us actually. Here. Yeah, we're gonna be actually, heading... no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the team therapist game this Sunday, December fourteenth, yeah. Clash of the Elves two. Oh yes. Um, two different teams of elves are going to be fighting each other to see who will be sent as helpers for the year. <laughs> um, and Bill and I are going to be on uh, the Green Elves team, and Greg will be on the. Green Elves team, yeah. right, there Greg? There's someone else on the Green Elves team, too. Yes, but unconfirmed, so we can't say, yeah. Greg. Someone right. who is a, a certain level of cap. Ah, uh, no possibly. comment. <laughs> um, it would be good to see that person if he were there to show up again, because he's a nice guy and I haven't seen him in a while. Um, anyway, <coughs> no, stop it, stop it, Bill. Um, unconfirmed. Anyway, um, we're going to be there this Sunday. The game is from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, okay. From what I've read, it's going to be a single... Continuous game for two and a half to three hours. Bring your batteries. Mm -hmm. bring, your bring, batteries. Your batteries. bring batteries, gas, hydrate. Water, everything. Please yes. hydrate. One, uh, the last time I went out to a team therapist game, which was the first time actually, yeah. um, there were some players on the field that didn't have any hydration kits. I lent them, uh, well, I didn't lend them, I gave them some water. Um, so try, try your best to bring out hydration uh, and make sure to stay as hydrated as possible because it's going to be a long game. Bring water to your fob. Each side will more than yep. likely have a little fob and bring some Gatorade, some water, extra ammo, BBs, beef jerky, protein, to keep your energy going. Throughout the day. Mm. Actually, yeah. uh, there's a good question uh, on um, our comments right here. What should this person polar star? An M27 IAR or a 416? Mm. Is a 416 CQB length? That's the question. Uh, well, I mean, that it is going to be. Oh, well, I mean, you could you could do a kit. I would name. I would say M27 IAR just because it's um, more of a, it plays more into the support role, and you're yep. going to have that mm -hmm. range. Uh, and if you if you don't know a lot about the M27, it's literally a rifleman rifle. It's made for a support weapon role. It's more for a DMR type role. I mean, it's it's kind of it can fill a lot of different roles as in like squad des designated marksman or you know support. So <laughs> I think yeah. I know why your eyes were all wide there, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Greg, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. Or Bill did mean to interrupt so, you. Sorry, yeah. I, I just saw the look on Bob's face and I'm like... L Laramie Palm, your shout-out is approved. Um, actually, real quick, since we've got uh, a semi-Jedi here, Greg, hmm. um, what is your favorite Star Wars character? You know, If you say Jar Jar Binks, I will murder you yeah, right if you, here. Yeah, if you say that, you're going to have to leave our property. Be Boba Fett, man. Like, ah, uh, you said it before you could. The Fett Man? Dang it. The story, well, the story behind like, him. Well, yeah, Ooh. the story behind him. Basically, if you guys aren't familiar with the Mandalorians, they're essentially the Spartans of the Star Wars universe. Uh, the helmet design is actually very much inspired by these Spartan helmets with the T-shaped visor. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure when George Lucas, I mean, it's literally the mythology, the characters, the the culture of the Mandalorians, is pretty much one to one to the Spartan mm. universe. I mean, there's some of the few non-force wielding guys that can really take on force wielders and win. Yes, um, there was an episode. They'll with always win, but they do. They do. They do fight the Jedi and the Sith a lot. Oh, sometimes they find themselves aligning more with the Sith. On the, there was an episode of uh, the Clone Wars where the one fights Obi Wan Kenobi mm -hmm. with a, you know, like a, a vibro blade. Yeah, I know. Is it, yeah, is it a dark it's, saber? It's, a, it's a black. It's probably blade. a vibro blade. Yeah, you yeah, were talking about it's. The, those things are treated so they can withstand <clears> the <throat> lightsaber. Well, no, contact. we we were actually discussing this uh, in that vibro blades essentially vibrate at an incredibly fast frequency to where they can go through scan and armor faster. Yeah. But Bill actually put me on to, I think it's a cortosis coating? or a Cortosis corto weave. Cortosis yeah. weave. Essentially, it was a very expensive weave they would put on vibro blades or even armor at a certain point. I wonder if Mando armor is true. No, 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 wait. Let me finish yeah. this so you understand. Um, they put that uh, that coating on there, and if, uh, if it comes in contact with a lightsaber... It basically shuts a lightsaber off. That it can't yet, possibly, yes. That yeah. Suck. So uh, another one that can deflect uh, lightsaber blasts is actually Mandalorian iron, if I remember correctly, if the extended universe, if I'm remembering correctly. But the only reason I remember the the Viro blade and the Cortosis was because I used to play Knights of the Old Republic a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but Bob, what's your favorite character? I, I was gonna say Boba Fett. Uh, the next up would be Han Solo. Um, 
the the next one, if I really had to go obscure, would be IG ninety eight. Mm. Oh, the uh, yeah, the bounty hunter. The, the yeah, robot. Because he was yeah. like he was created not to be sentient, but they made there was an accident and he became sentient <laughs> and then split up on his own. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of them too. Yeah. Do, does it have to be in the movies or can we can we go extended universe? I would say stay in the movies for now. Please say Jar Jar. No, I was going to say... Um, well, are you asking about like, characters? Favorite just, character like, in... Well, I was going to say Star I Killer. I say the entire Star Wars lore. Go I was going to say Star it. Killer because... from, from The Force Unleashed. Okay. Because he's super powerful, and he holds the lightsaber backwards, <laughs> and in the second one, he has two of them. All right. Reversed. And it's all awesome. Right. Why don't we at least... Back to the like, topic. All right, yeah, because the Star Wars topic was last time. Christmas is coming. We're really excited, <laughs> and we've already gone over a lot of the promos, um, including Santa's giveaway, but we also have... Uh, we also have a Clash of the Elves coming up. And since we've gone over that, why don't we maybe perhaps, uh, what's that called, uh, answer some questions? Mm -hmm. Sure. All Let's right. Show. Okay. Greg looks so hot. That's not a question. That's a statement. <laughs> hey, it's, it's but thank you, Gigi Charlie. <laughs> thank you for saying that. Um, Eric, oh, uh, oh, can I say it? Go ahead. Heath Phillips, shout out. Approved. Well played. Uh, Airsoft, yeah, what? Oh, it disappeared. Scroll, scroll. Dang it. Why does it do that? Why does it jump so far when you scroll up? It's so annoying. Okay. Uh, it happens. Okay. Shout out for the Django Wango. Your shout out <laughs> is approved. <laughs> oh, man. Killertron 9000. It looks like you're going to call me out this Sunday to a duel. Not surprised. Very down right now. Um, Airsoft GI. How has the Airsoft GI crew been? Pretty good. 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 Yeah. All right. I think that was the Airsoft Vad, Vicious and Delicious. Good to see you here again. <laughs> uh, it's actually, he's got a really cool patch. I think it's got a skull and cross bacon. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Um, all right. Let's see. Do, 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 do. And I can't find that question. Keep uh, a, go ahead. Keep seeing a question keep popping up about a plate carrier. What camo oh, best that was the one I was looking for. What camo would be best go with a Masquerade LBX map system plate carrier? Range green. <laughs> now, you actually have this, uh, this yeah, plate carrier, I right? I actually mm -hmm. have that exact one, LBX Masquerade. Uh, Map system, yeah, you know, uh, it's funny because I actually helped them come up with the whole map system uh, nomenclature. Oh well, it's good you're here, uh, uh, Tom. So you're able to get a question answered for you by Greg. So you, you're the uh, answer Ranger again Green, was Ranger, Ranger Green. Ranger Green. Ranger Green. Um, but gray also works pretty well. Ranger because mass gray has more of a greener gray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say Ranger. It's more gray. of a green gray than the gray gray. Yeah. Well, like the wolf gray is on like uh, like Arteryx wolf gray has more of a blue hue to it. Um, LBX gray kind of has almost like a kind of a reddish kind of hue to it. It's just like a warmer gray. Um, but yeah, like for uh, for mask red, I'd definitely say Ranger Green. All right, real quick, uh, Bob, what scope is that? This is a uh, Micro T1. Yeah. This is made by. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, AM, AMP. More, I think AMP. Um, okay, this yeah. is a red and green drop. Green dot Micro T1. Oh, it's a green drop. Green drop. <laughs> well, it's green not drop. elasticized, is it, Bill? Plasticized is a word. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, Bill Board. Nice. Bill. Um, <laughs> Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Okay. Bouncing Bill. Bill. We're getting <laughs> Bill the Butched. Uh, the Butcher? Yeah, you, guys are, you guys are working on his new name. Yeah, but you? it's got to be both funny, slightly degrading, <laughs> an inside joke. Or all of and, the above. And a uh, reference to literature. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. Reference to literature. Okay. Uh, shout out to uh, Addicted to the Gear on Instagram. Your shout out is approved. Addicted to the Gear. All right. Gear is good. Greg, can you switch the rail system on the PTS Mega Arms? See, right now, the rail system that is on there is proprietary to that gun. So at the moment, no. Um, I mean, with a lot of machining and a lot of uh, custom work, it's possible. Um, but so far, the only mods I've seen are people cutting that rail shorter, but there's no other rail that will go on it at the moment. Mm. Really quick, Nick Bungay and Millennium Gaming, your shout-outs are approved. Um, Greg, Airsoft Vlad wants to know if you can write his philosophy paper. Airsoft Vlad. Vlad. Sorry, why do they say That's Vlad? That's vicious and delicious. Come on, man. Uh, well, That's the guy who dressed up as the, the clown uh, in the zombie game. Oh, yeah. okay. See, if you would have said that, I would have been like, oh, okay. But To be, to be honest, my, my English writing skills haven't been as good since before the army, so you're probably better off <laughs> writing it by yourself. You're, you're not a philosophizer? No, nah, no. Nah. Quietly judging. Just, uh, a, just an airsoft BB. Here's how you write the paper. <laughs> just ask 
why. And that's the entire paper. It's the philosophy of why. <laughs> shout out to Commissar Panther and the Woodland Airsoft Rangers. Your shout out is approved. Um, <laughs> Build a bows. Bows. Um, real quick, um, even though I keep saying that, Build folks have been asking what uh, what flash hiders you have on these guns. Oh, so on this one, this is, uh, this, no, this is actually the Griffin Armament muzzle brake mm -hmm. on the... Um, the other the, one's uh, a battle comp. Yeah, this one on the flat dark earth is the battle comp 1.0, and on the uh, other one, which I like to call the other one like the mil spec or the uh, the Le like the I almost call it, like felt the Leo gun because you find a lot of duty guns still have the A-frame front sight post. This is the Rainer Arms um, XT pew pew. Yes. So, <laughs> well said. All made by PTS. So awesome. Build and bowels. this one will actually take suppressor tape. So. Blastocyzer. <laughs> Blastocyzer. <laughs> I like that. Of course, continue. Is it Blastocyzer or Ball Astocyzer? Yeah, uh, Bill Astocyzer. J Palaz123. Well, What's up, bud? I haven't seen you in a while. Ballistic. Billy the Kid. There you go. That's a historical. That's, that's, that's pretty good one. Ballistic Bill. Right. Yeah. Take my AP physics test. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Sorry. Wild Bill Hop Up. <laughs> that's not bad. That's actually uh, kind like of funny. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jennifer Smith, your shout out is approved. All right. What is the best what camo? The, the one for the right environment, the one that fits suits the. Okay, environment. instead of best, let's say how about favorite? Bob, what's your favorite? Green Atex. Okay, okay, rebel camo. Okay, rebel 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 camo. Come on now, guys. It, hmm. it, in case you guys out there are wondering, me, I really like Green Atex just because it was the camo the Rebels wore yeah. in Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. I think for me, man, I have so many camos. Uh, you know what? If you would consider Wolf Gray a camo, I'd probably go with Wolf Gray, just because uh, it's, it's super elite. Wolf Gray is <laughs> is leet. Um, elite. You never uh, heard that phrase? No, I have. Oh, okay. It's All from right. yeah, internet yeah, and yeah. gaming and stuff it's like elite. that. My it's favorite, nice. because I've never owned really any camo. I've always done contractor stuff. Is actually got to be Woodlander M81. Well, it's That's also the camo you just bought. Too. I know, but like it, it goes really well with. I like it because it goes with any color gear: black, tan, or green. It works. Jackson Kilman, your shout out is approved. Bill the BB Baller, not bad. Um, EPM discounts, Greg. Uh, right now the EPMs are staying at map. That's one of the things about PTS. Everything's more or less staying at map. But every now and then, um, it really just depends on the boss. Every now and then, sometimes. The can I, can I throw in a, a, a Price is Right sad tuba? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> always stay tuned to the retailers like Airsoft GX. Yeah, you never know. I will say the EPM mags are pretty amazing in that they feed at really high rates of fire. And I know our guys on the East Coast, like when they get them in, like they just go they right out the door. Them out. Like, yeah, I think Ed. Ed That's a train. That's <laughs> Ed, train Ed, uh, Ed, Zach, and uh, I mean a lot of the guys over there. Like as, yeah, as soon as the shipment comes in, they'll pretty much buy it. Like, well, no, they're, they're built like a brick. They they are built like a brick. But the thing is, like it's not just like it's not just the employees buying them. Like literally, the second they come in, they will call the customers that have asked about them, and the yeah, customers will drive right over and just. Buy them immediately. So. I've noticed when people buy them, they buy them in huge batches. Like yeah. they buy them in batches more than I personally have, like eight, like six or eight of them. Hey, I, I run but, um, <laughs> like fifteen. If I if I have like eight, oh, I'm thinking of your L, 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 Oh God, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fifteen extra pounds. Yeah. I've run about twelve L four mags once. I'd say I, ten. Yeah. Like for me, like I, I like used, I used to run a lot, and like in terms of how many mags I'd carry, it kind of balances out around nine or ten, with maybe a high cap or two just in case for those hmm. crazy, crazy firefights. If I really need. Sorry to interrupt. Well, it's not really interrupting. Just finishing off. Billy Wet Willie. <laughs> that's kind of that's a contender. Yeah. I, I know you. Like, I know you don't like it, but I still like Billy. Wait, the kid. Billy the Kid is a good one. I will <laughs> slap you. No, I mean like that can be like your yeah. like your, your character signature. page. <laughs> Billy Wet Willie. Okay. All right, Mr. Muncher Man, your shout out is once again approved. All right. Well, this is a question that I don't understand. Will PTS ever be making P mags again? Uh, all the Magpul molds are uh, non-existent anymore. They, uh, so pretty much no more will be made. Whatever's out there, get it while you can. Uh, right now, the only PMAGs that are available are the PTS high caps. So, yeah, this is more, more or less the 300-round uh, PTS uh, high caps right now. So this is the only PMAGs available um, pretty much from now until the end of time we're making the EPMs. But we might make some other variants, or uh, EPM Plus or something like that. So, cool. yeah. I mean, the EPMs look... Very good. I like 
Mad VT one two Mad VT one two three part two of Rebel Training Camp question mark um, that is gonna come out soon. Uh, we just put up part one of the Rebel Training Camp. Uh, next up, I believe, is gonna be uh, part one of the Zombie Extravaganza. So, folks, you know, we've been getting uh, calls, and, well, mostly mostly comments and emails yeah. from people wanting Rebel Training Camp footage and Zombie Game footage. We're working on as fast as we can, uh, so we're staggering it. Rebel Training Camp, then Zombie Game. Hopefully we can get back to Rebel Training Camp and then get some more Zombie Game stuff. We have a lot of action footage we're going through as quick as we can. I will mm -hmm. say, this year for you guys, when it comes to like games and stuff, you guys had quite the lineup this year. Like Assault on Antioch, oh, man. Zombie Game, and Rebel Training mm -hmm. Camp. We've, uh, we actually calculate out we've either gone out to games or held our own events um, at least 12 times this year. So every month we've been out to something. That's pretty and crazy. The la like, I think from August... To like November, we two were going. We were going two a month. Yeah, we'll get GI game we'd throw, and then another <clears> game we had to go to. So. And you have to think like depending on who went. Like you have Max, who's running the the main the camera, cameras, yeah. but then we got head cameras on you, and you know whether it's Daniel or like Daniel and me, or Daniel and whoever. So there's a lot of footage. I think when I went to Faded Giant because I was editing Matt's footage, so I had like three or four different points of view. Then I had the gun cam, then I had mine. I'm still working on that. Like when and when it comes to editing, when you have multiple different points of view, that just multiplies the amount of work, time, and effort, and that goes into it. So these guys, they do pretty good with all the amount of footage you guys it's a have. It's a lot of work, and uh, I know a lot of you folks out there wish we'd get out faster, and we wish we could too, but it's just, you know, we're, we're at the physical limits good, of how fast we can Good products edit. take time. Yes, indeed. Um, I, this is actually a question people, someone's been asking for a little while now, and, it, okay, there we go. Um, JED Productions, or JED Productions, is Robinson Armament, or Robinson Arms, uh, Polymer XCRC a good starter gun? That that's their uh, their um, like their their sport like, line. Yeah, the sport line. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I personally think it's it's not a bad starter gun. I mean, it's definitely on the more affordable end, which is what you get with the polymer body. Um, I've never been a complete fan of the Robson Arms uh, XCR externally. Um, I do. I mean, I do like the full metal version. I just don't like I, it, the long one. It was an one. interesting yeah. idea. Uh, but yeah, I would say. I, the shorter one's more my jam. Yeah, the which is the XCRC, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, to be honest, any any gun that's under two hundred these days, like they're all very comparable in terms mm -hmm. of their performance. Like from the CQR, the King Arms Isle Fiber, the uh, Combat Machine, or even you know, even even the G fours are actually really really good, and those are under <laughs> like under three hundred. Uh, a lot of good options out there now. Bang kill, Bill. Bang kill. Which we is funny because I very rarely ever yeah. think kill anyone. Dill Pickle Bill. I'm liking these so far. Billy Ake. That's all right, but I like Dill Pickle Bill or Wet Willie Bill or Wet Whatever. Bill um, Wet Willie. Billy Wet Willie. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, airborne operations in Milsim. What a fortuitous question since we have. No. I know they've done an airborne Milsim training course before, but I don't know if anything's come of it where people... Because there's a lot of liability. Like, the government can do stuff like that because, I mean, the government, they control every aspect of, you know, the liability, everything. You know, you're pretty much, you work for the government. But for a... I mean, it would probably have to be similar to, like, the liabilities that go with skydiving. But, I mean, the, the company that holds the Milsim event would, would be, like, liable. So they, there's a lot of legal stuff going into that. But, yeah. I mean, it could be possible, and it would be pretty awesome. To, you know. It would be pretty awesome. I have seen uh, some uh, some head cam footage of someone skydiving into an airsoft event. Uh, I personally would love to do that. Um, I, got, I would have to recertify for that, uh, but it would be really fun. But Just know, jumping with combat equipment is not that simple, there and there's a good chance you could break your guns just from the <clears> jump <throat> Break yourself. Like, yeah. Either, like, the gun will hit the ground, because you, you deploy it with a static line. I mean, it's normally in a weapons case of some kind, but, um, yeah, you can mess up your stuff pretty good. And we've got Frank showing, uh, coming in. This is uh, Frank's face. He's grabbing something off the table. Anyway, I would like to actually mention, uh, we recently um, uh, got some advice from some folks in the Special Force community about uh, parachuting into a live airsoft operation. Uh, and it was good advice. They were basically telling us, like, you know, jumping with a lot of kit is way different than you expect. And, again, like, you know, it's back-breaking. It's back-breaking. <laughs> um, it's body-breaking. Like, yes. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want to do that static line where you drop your kit first and then you hit the ground, a yeah. you know, fair chance you're going to break your gun. So yeah. what they had suggested is to carry a minimal amount of kit on you so that when you land, you know, you're not going to get shot in the eyeballs. Uh, you know, maybe carry, maybe carry like a, a rubber knife. Or... 
well, maybe like magazines, maybe a pistol, maybe a knife, but then like have a supply cache on the ground that you're going to have to fight to access to yeah. or to get to. Let's have a rally point. Uh, was, it, wasn't it, was it you who was telling me anything about the boots jumping in like boots? They have to have a zipper or something for... No, no, the zippers, and Greg could comment on this better yeah, than I could because he's actually yeah. a paratrooper, but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the zipper was designed uh, to quickly access the ankle in in the possibility of an ankle injury when you land. Well, thing is, in the United States Army, according to AR six seventy one, you're not supposed to have boots and zippers. Well, there you go. Uh, you know, when when I was skydiving mm -hmm. uh, regularly, um, they actually would not they would not allow us to wear boots. You could only wear sneakers and no flip flops, obviously. Nice. But but you had to wear sneakers or something that didn't cover your ankle. I so. mean, to each their own. But jumping jumping period is dangerous. Jumping oh. with equipment. <laughs> With multiple people who had limited training is very dangerous. Like, I mean, there's a reason at Airborne School you do, like, a couple jumps before you even get to the combat equipment mm -hmm. first. You do mm -hmm. a couple Hollywood jumps first. So so you have to think about it, too. Like, you're jumping – if you were jumping into a Milsim game, right, I mean, if they had already gotten qualified or whatever before or what, however they'd want to do it, I mean, these are people you've never jumped with before, and you got to make sure everyone's on the same page or as much as you possibly can – and even then, I mean, once you exit the bird, any number of things could happen. You can have a mid-air collision. You can run off the top of the other guy's parachute. Some guy can steal your air, and now you're kind of plummeting. Your chute can fail to deploy. Now you have to deploy reserve. And like I said, if you want to have combat equipment with all of that, I mean, there's times where, like, because that adds a lot of weight, and it changes the physics of how you're swaying under the chute and everything. So well, that's the thing. Just to clarify, like, Greg is actually talking about static line jumping, and I'm yeah. talking about uh, accelerated freefall free yeah. jumping, where it's two different types of parachutes. Yeah. Uh, two completely different types of parachutes. I have no idea. Well, why don't but we explain to our viewers for real quick? Air, Okay, so freefall, you jump, and more or less, um, I mean, it, you're literally in freefall, and then at a certain point, at a certain altitude, or wherever, you're going to deploy your chute. About 2,500 yeah. to 5,000 feet. And you'll usually have like a... Altimeter. Um, yeah, altimeter that's going to make sure you deploy. It'll it'll deploy the chute at a certain altitude. I'm no bring that in. No matter what. You should. Be cool. The, uh, but static line, theory, if you want to do a milsim jump, most milsim jumps are going to be static line. A mil, like an actual military jump. For line for infantry. Part. Yeah. For yeah. Line yeah. Infantry. yeah. But, um, but special forces jumps are with? Well, they do. They do both. They do static yeah, line. I and thought I was going to get you to admit like, to it. They do okay. a lot of. They do a lot of free fall, but yes, they're all true. static. They're all static line qualified. But I'm Absolutely. telling you, if you're going to trust a lot of people to do free fall, like you got, mm. it's mm -mm. it's like both are very dangerous. To be honest, static line. Well, they're both dangerous. There's trade offs with how safe and how dangerous each one is, but they um, but yeah, they're both pretty dangerous because if you mess up in static line, your reaction time until the ground is not very long. Because you're a lot lower, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, the combat jumps. You don't even yeah. have time to deploy your reserve. There's in no an way. actual yeah. combat jump, you don't jump with the reserve. Yeah, yeah, it's good luck. Thank you, thank you for serving Uncle Sam. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Pretty much. See, if I had to do it, and that's the thing is, like, I don't have a lot of experience uh, free falling with, you know, a team of people. Yes. Um, I've experienced. That's dangerous. Yeah, no kidding. Sure. I mean, I, I've experienced deploying my parachute around other people, so I always have to check if they're above or whatnot. Yeah. But, but yeah. the thing is, like, I would rather, like, free fall on my own and just be kind of like. A lone dude, just like mm -hmm. trying to get my supply cache and link up with people. You all solid snake up in there. If you're looking yeah. to do a mass attack with static line, that is still pretty dang dangerous. That that is an absurd well, amount of. Let's blood. let's just put it this way: anytime you jump out of anything in the air, it's probably pretty dangerous. Yeah, you anytime you add other people, it becomes exponentially dangerous. <laughs> you know what I've heard is actually the most dangerous sport in the world: flying a helicopter. Nope. You want to guess again? Shark hunting. Nope. No. Uh, cheerleading. Fishing. Fishing. More people get killed fishing every year than anything else. Well, there you go. Yep. Drowning? Uh, drowning, obviously. Uh, but also, you know, people who are drunk and boating. Oh, um, there's a problem. You know, fish actually killing people or fish jumping out of the water, knocking them off the boat, drowning. <laughs> a marlin just coming in and impaling someone? That basically. happens. That, I, I'm that, not saying it. Yeah, I'm saying no, that like, absolutely happens. Jeez. Deadliest Jeez. catch. There's a reason it's called deadliest catch. Yeah, well, it, it's, in a, it's definitely pretty rough. That's not... No kidding about that. <laughs> All right, All right, guys. <laughs> Sorry. We're, we're way off topic. We went from Christmas to Star Wars to parachuting. Very to, logical to, combination. Yeah, it was a good question. To dying a very painful fish impaling death. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think that's actually going to do it for a live show. We went a little bit over because we started a little bit late. Thank you guys for sticking with us. We really appreciate it. Um, once again, I'm Bobby Axeman Hildebrand. This is... Are you pointing to me or Greg? You. <laughs> Bill, the I don't have a nickname yet. And still bitter about it. And we've got Greg. Uh, <laughs> Greg Long, a.k.a. Spartan117GW. GW. Not, uh, not 1117? No. 
Yeah, yeah. What were you going to say? Keep an eye, because these things, all the new rails will be coming out with rails soon. Well played, Greg. Well played. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Goodbye. Bye-bye bye. now. Bye-bye. Look at the camera. We're bye. still trying to find the bye. off button. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Found it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.